Hey, friends and family of Ronnie's Farm to Table. Trouble in paradise, it seems like. My little heater shut off during the night without alerting me, and it got down to 58 degrees. I'm still early in the stages here where I don't have to worry in the incubation phase, but not happy about that. I gotta keep a close eye on it, check it throughout the night. The next couple of days, making sure that this unit is working. If it's not working, I gotta get a new one. And when I was looking this morning, my water tank humidifier, I saw some dead bugs on the bottom. And that cannot happen. So I have to dump it out, sterilize it, clean it, put new water in it, and get it working again as quick as I can. So let's go do that. Well, folks, something shitty happened. I just cracked the bottom. It fell right out of my hand onto that metal step there. Oh, shit. One problem after another today, huh? Well, let's see how much I can get into. Thanks that I have a second toad. So I'm gonna put, get this one cleaned. It has some of the substrate mix in here still. But it does have a crack too, but it's only up to halfway, and I only need to fill the toads to halfway. I gotta order some new ones. They're not that expensive, they're $25 or so. Oh well. I hope I can use both toads. Um, the inner one, the top one, has a crack on the very bottom that I caused myself, and the lower one cracked after I purchased it, but it was just moving it around. But if the crack is on the top here, and the inner one has a crack on the bottom. So if I combine both of them, and I only need to get it half full or even less than that, I think I can still keep running my humidifier because I need it. I'm in the incubation phase, I need the high uh, humidity in the tent. Let's hope it works. So let's clean off the mister and the sterilizer, put everything back together, and let's see how it goes. Crisis averted. Something I have to keep an eye on though. And see how it goes. On to other projects. Happy morning. You might have seen by now that I'm only using one tent, and it's actually the growing tent, the fruiting tent that I set up. Um, I have to see if the system works, and it's I, I have equally conditions in this dark tent over here for the incubation, but this one is a little bit more controlled. I have a CO2 monitor on it, a humidifier monitor. I'm gonna have on this one a humidifier monitor too, but right now I just need to get this one batch that I have going in there to the growing stage and then just click on the lights and see how that all works out. Otherwise I will be using the dark tent in the future and keep that over here. This guy is just basically the test and trial tent. Just wanted to clarify that because some people have seen that I have two tents and I'm only using the growing tent right now, which has lights in it. But the lights are more for me to really monitor sometimes for, for five minutes or so per day. I can completely look at everything, see how everything is developing, if there's any bad mold, any bad, bad bacteria growing. So just wanted to clarify that. So here's a little project that has nothing to do with mushrooms and nothing to do really with um, Ronnie's farm to table, but it has to get done. I need those stakes here, the metal stakes, and build a snow fence over there and build a snow fence behind my house. My house is right behind the camera here. Um, last year we had a lot of south winds blowing at us and my bedroom was hit pretty hard with cold wind. So I'm gonna get this all detached here Put one snow fence over there and one snow fence back here. One cool thing that you actually see here is this little green house that was our immigrant labor worker house. And uh, the sugar beet industry, sugar beet farming, uh, we used to have 
um, Mexican immigrants traveling all the way from South America up north here to help with the sugar beets. Um, usually it was a whole family and each sugar beet farmer had like a family that always came up for many many decades and helped um, cleaning out the sugar beets, uh, the rows and, and helped topping them off and all kinds of things and they usually stayed here for two months or so during that time and you believe it back in the day there were about 10 people in that little house it was a whole family mother father children brothers all kinds of things so let's get to it before I start talking even more about farm history right <laughs> This is the northwest corner and most of the time in the winter the wind blows right from here. I blow through this little channel against my house and I can mitigate the stream by building a snow fence right here. I had it last year, it worked pretty well. A little bit of a story time here now. Um, in 2016, me and my wife Heidi had our first date right back there. That's our sunset area. And it was a very nice meal. We had a three course meal. I cooked it right in front of her out on a camping stove and we watched the sunset. Afterwards, we had a bonfire and the rest is history. So let's get that fence done and then I can focus on other projects. All right. Well, folks, that it is for today. I have a birthday party to attend to, my father-in-law. It will be a lot of fun. Come on, Kaiser, let's go in. Oh, he likes it outside. He doesn't really want to go in, but I'm going to be gone for the rest of the evening, so. Right, Kaiser? Lucy's waiting for you in there. Bye. Bye.